Another day in San Cristobal de las Casas, Mexico. I found out I had an autoimmune disease about 16 years ago. And I take this every morning and this is my last pill. So I will be needing more. And I have to run a few medical related errands. So maybe I bring you along today and show you what it's like to live in Mexico with a chronic illness. And if you're new to me, Hi, my name is Kara, and my daughters and I have been traveling full time for the past five plus years and making Mexico our home base for the past two. Good morning, sunshine. First pit stop before we get medication, it's I'm gonna go get my blood drawn. I have an endocrinologist here, so I have to keep track of the blood myself, and then I keep them and I show them to my doctor in the US. This is where I go get my blood drawn. They are very flexible with the kind of tests they'll do for you. And they're really nice, really professional. Now when I say professional, professional in a we're in Mexico kind of way. I feel like the standards here are just different than the standards in the US. Like this is a shared office. Behind that little wall, you could hear another patient being taken care of. Um, but it's really easy and you can pay with cash or credit card. So I like the flexibility. So I personally like that place because it's very clean and I've never had to make an appointment. I can just walk in almost any hour to get it done. And then she gives me the option of either sending me the results via WhatsApp or she can print it for me and give me an actual copy. I usually go for both if I'm going back home to my doctor. Now there is an endocrinologist in San Chris that I could technically see, but the wait was like three, four months. I love that all doctors are available via WhatsApp. Makes it so much easier. I just stepped on one of those. Shh, don't tell nobody. Yes, sorry about that. First cement. So I usually take my test without eating, so I needed something in my stomach right now. And even though like I edit this down pretty well, <laughs> there's actually a lot of walking between one place or another. So um, we're gonna be having lunch in a little bit while, but I really needed something to be able to continue walking for a few more hours until we get to our final destination. And this place is really cute because they have like really fresh items and even though it's a veggie bar, it's not a hundred percent vegan. She is so good. Usually I'll have a giant bruise. I think they have eggs. That might be the only thing. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But the drinks are so good. This has avocado, coffee, cacao. Mm -hmm. I forgot. The avocado part is the bomb because it makes it super creamy. It is so good and healthy. Thank you, Kathy, it's delicious. Yep, and I slurped it down so fast. <laughs> and both drinks were 144 pesos. So when I first got to San Cristobal, I was vegan-ish because I still ate eggs, but I didn't eat any kind of meat. But unfortunately with my diet, there's so many things that I can't eat that it just makes it so difficult. Restaurants that have vegan options or are vegetarian or vegan usually will have a lot of raw items and unfortunately I can't eat raw items. Can't digest them. I stopped eating salads in most places early on because you don't really know if they have been washed properly and I kept getting sick. But also the protein options they offer, I usually can't eat. Like we have soy, we have gluten and we have legumes and whatnot, like beans and stuff. I can have them, but in very small quantities. So now I'm in the search for my medication. And this was our first pit stop. I've looked for my medication in many pharmacies. I have not had my luck. So this is probably like the seventh pharmacy I've hit up. <laughs> I think I am buying the city out of my medication, <laughs> at least in the amount that I take it in. So that one didn't have it, and now I'm checking in this one, crossing my fingers. 
sometimes they have it but um like i get 50 milligrams and sometimes they have a hundred obviously i can't take more and the pill is so tiny that it's really hard to cut in half so i just look until i find the amount that i want or i mean that i need but i'm stocking up so i can take some back to miami okay so that's the second one today but all the other ones that i've checked in the past months have run out also and today we're gonna go to San Agustin and this place is really nice because it's like a like a food court it has a bunch of different restaurants pizza Japanese food Spanish food Portuguese I think they have Thai it's a very cool place so another reason that I stopped being vegan when I got here is because the situation is that most of the dishes that are healthy and I can actually eat, like, you know, like simple ingredients, um, which I would consider the, the plates that are truly Mexican, you know, like those rancheros or tacos or things like that, they usually have some sort of meat product. And if they don't have meat product, then there's no protein in them. So I, I really needed to eat in a way that was good for my health and I had to adjust my diet. And all this happened kind of like last summer when I went back to Miami and my health just spinned out of control. And um, so when I came back, I had to be like super strict with getting my nutrients and protein and everything that my body needed to not get super sick while we're here. So the main things I can't eat is gluten, soy, and dairy. Gluten, soy, and dairy. So being vegan in the U.S. was perfect because I didn't have to worry about dairy. Here, when I first arrived, telling somebody that I was vegan was not helpful because they will overlook things like lard and other hitting items that they might cook with that is not straight up milk or cheese. Or sometimes if the cheese and the cream was not visible, they would still have it in the dish. It would just be hidden and I wouldn't know until I got sick. So eating Mexican food here has been the easiest way for me to keep healthy. Well, Franchettos is definitely my go-to. Because they automatically don't come with cream and cheese. A lot of the other dishes like chilaquiles come with cream and cheese. Unfortunately, corn is an allergen for me, but only in the U.S. Here, it doesn't seem to affect me in the same way. So unfortunately, it was kind of trial and error to know what kinds of foods I could eat here because I didn't really know what the ingredients everything had. And menus here do not list ingredients, unfortunately. They'll give you like a general idea, but they won't really tell you what's in it. So having allergic reactions to certain things is difficult. I have found in Mexico in general, but more so in small towns like San Cristobal. Um, I didn't feel like a lot of people even knew what vegan truly was, you know? I think it's still drizzling, but I need my medication and I need to go home. So I toughed it out and I went out in the rain. And the rain here is so cold. Okay, maybe it's raining harder than I thought. <laughs> we are three blocks away from our destination. Now the next pharmacy that we're going to, it's one of the biggest ones in Centro and it's actually open 24 hours this is the one that i went to when i first arrived and my daughter got sick if you haven't seen that video i'll tag it below but it's more like a traditional pharmacy in the united states you know it has food it has it's kind of like a convenience store mixed with a pharmacy um and i find that the pharmacists here are really knowledgeable so when i can't find something i come here this one of the biggest pharmacies in Centro, the other ones are in the outskirts. What I like about Farmacia Guadalajara is that you can find products that you find in the United States, like Pepto-Bismol or Advil. Not all pharmacies carry that because they carry their own brands. Some will. I'm gonna bite too since I had a hard time finding them. And then we headed home and hoped that it wouldn't rain harder. <laughs> we were kind of wet and tired. I love getting home when it's raining. There's nothing better. 
the next morning. Mornings on San Cristobal are pretty special. The weather gives it a cozy feeling. And you know, I decorated my house to be cozy. And I keep herbs because of that factor. There's something so special about just stepping outside in your garden and cutting down a few leaves and then making tea for yourself. And I love lemongrass tea. <laughs> um, and this it smells so good. Like, I don't know. It, it really feels like I'm putting my own er energy into my healing. And I like that. I do find that my morning routine is definitely a part of my chronic illness like it makes me feel so much better and when i go to the gym and have a nutritionist both which i used used to have here and i haven't had in the past uh, last couple of months because i hurt my back those things really make me feel better um i feel more alive the thing is that with my disease it's kind of like a balance between the pain that the gym causes and the feeling better so i never know which one to choose do i choose pain to feel better do i feel taking care of myself to feel better there's no right answer in this i'm working on this today i have to make a few outfit for my kids because um, there's a lot of events happening when we fly to miami um, so I'm gonna do that, but I probably won't record because it just makes it more time consuming. Anyhow, I'm gonna go get an IV today and I thought I'd take you with me so you can see what it's like to get one in Mexico. But I'll have to take a shower with cold water because we ran out of gas and I'm kind of in a hurry. So I'm going to my general practitioner. I wasn't sure if he could give IVs, but I called him and he showed me what kind of IVs he had and um, said that he could administer it for me. Um, I really like the flexibility I have. Like, I feel like I have more control of my health here. I know that IVs um, with antioxidants and vitamin C make me feel better when I'm down. And I really have had a rough month physically I felt like I was fighting something and every time my body's fighting something, my autoimmune disease reacts. So it was really nice to be able to call him and ask him if it was okay and him watching over me while, you know, I got my IV. I also felt like I was dehydrated, so it was an extra perk. Now, do I like sitting here for, I think it was like two and a half hours. Um, not so much, <laughs> but again, you know, you take the good with the bad. I, um, I couldn't even be on my phone because the IV was in my right arm. <laughs> so yes, I recorded a little bit, but I couldn't work on the computer or anything else. <laughs> and the longer it took, the more drowsy I got. I was so tired from like laying there and I've been feeling better in general so it was kind of rough but eventually it was over and she was super nice and really took care of me so i felt pampered apapachada and it was good it was good i appreciated it i guess we'll see if it helps and it did help it did help i finally felt better in a few days medical attention in mexico is so different because it feels like a friend doing the stuff for you. At the same time, they don't do the things that are considered, the things that are considered professional, like wearing gloves or sometimes a mask or um, like when she put the tape on, she was working with one hand because she was holding the, the needle with one hand and the tape with the other and the tape got stuck to itself so she put it in her mouth to stretch it out things like that i want tacos but i don't know if my body will take me there we'll see thank you so much for watching i love you goodbye